soldier on and and learn from the best and observe uh, what what pulls down the weak and the corrupt and uh, and hold hold your cards extremely close. Well, I wanted to ask you, uh, Asher, that's sort of where I was thinking about starting because you do mention one thing. I think you said it was on her desk. What's the the little uh, like the paperweight cube. with the with the slogan on it? And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. That story. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I did sneak into her office. Full disclosure. Uh, also not also not a simple operation. Um, and she, it's a plexiglass cube that says "In der Ruhe liegt die." Uh, Kraft, uh, and that means in calm, there is strength, which is truly her mantra. That That is among her superpowers, Ryan, is that she does not lose her cool. And, you know, God knows uh, autocrats uh, from, from Trump to Putin have tried to, to shake that surreal calm of hers but she ain't going there she just she just doesn't meet them uh where they want to be met which is on on their playing field of uh of uh bloviation and insults she, she just doesn't take the bait and that drives them bonkers do you know the origins of that quote where she got it from how it came to be on her desk it, I, I, uh, I never I, never heard it yeah. before no me neither you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna take a guess Goethe. I assume it's Goethe because she she uh, swears by Goethe, you know, one of the gods of, of German high culture. And uh, it it seems like having having been to Goethe's house in, in Weimar, uh, it had that vibe. It had that uh, that uh, hyper calm feeling. So so let me just try Goethe for that. Yeah, it's it, your, your point about not being provoked. That seems like a. a an underrated skill in a leader. I think we want, it's sort of, we want passionate leaders, right? We want leaders yes. who, and then of course, leadership obviously selects for the driven, for the ambitious, for someone with something to prove, right. all of that. So you end up not getting very often leaders who can't be provoked, but that's almost like the, at, at least at that level, at, at the, the height mm -hmm. of power, is probably the ultimate skill or the ultimate tool in the toolkit yeah. because uh, people are trying to provoke you all the time. Yeah, it seems it seems so obvious, and yet, as you say, um, because because uh, she projects negative charisma, um, which is which is born of the fact that she doesn't emote in public. Um, it, you know, it, it's it's hard to imagine her going too far in uh, in our political culture because because we really want to be entertained, and the Germans uh, have been there. They uh, they paid a very high price for their entertainer in chief, and and so the, I, I'm not sure that she would that that in fact sad to say I'm sure that she wouldn't thrive. In our in a, in our environment of of you know we want we want bloviators it seems, and you know it just seems like we don't we don't learn we don't learn from from choosing the, repeatedly the, the 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 theatrical over the the entertainer over over the guy who's going to be interested in us the executive uh, yes. Yes, but 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 she's more than that. She's she's more than an executive. She's sure. she's way she's way more than that. Do you do you think it's it partly it's counter programming? I mean, we have the stereotype that women are more emotional than men. How much of that is just naturally who she is, and how much of it is she understands that the expectation or the criticism might be this, and she's trying to very much go in the opposite direction. Definitely, partly that she had she had so much to overcome. I mean, you know, here's this woman. Uh, coming from East Germany, uh, she was 35, as you know, when she first crossed from uh, from East to West Berlin. Uh, so a fully formed uh, person, um, and she was a physicist, so a scientist, and and above all, a woman in a country that never even had a queen. I think uh, uniquely in in Europe. So she had so much to overcome. So yes, she was because she's 
quite brilliant. Um, she, uh, she observed um, what works and what doesn't work. She, uh, she, she, I mean, she's always learning, uh, even now. Um, she, she processes new information like nobody's business. Um, you know, voracious reader. I mean, it kind of breaks my heart to even be talking about this because there's no one like her on the on the world stage. No one, um, no one who comes close to having her personal story. The 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 prime feature of which is that this is a woman who lived for 35 years in a police state and for whom the word freedom is not a, you know, a, a big abstraction. It means not being able to read the books you want to read, not being able to travel to the Western sector of the country to visit your relatives. It means daily seeing that, that hideous monument to man's inhumanity to man, which was the wall, because on her way to uh, her lab every morning, she, her, her uh, uh, subway rattled past that. Um, so, you know, this, the, you know the, these uh, experiences really were foundational for her. And, and uh, I maintain um, that they really served the entire world for the last 16 years because we had such a person, such a calm and extraordinarily centered, centered as an oak tree, Angela Merkel, um, which, which uh, doesn't mean she's boring. I, that was one of the pleasant surprises of, of my five years uh, search of, for who is Angela Merkel, is that she's not really who we think she is. I, I'm writing about uh, Merkel and uh, Queen Elizabeth in, in the book that I'm doing now, which is about sort of temperance and self-discipline. And it ah. struck me that they both came to very similar places from very similar, dissimilar paths. I'll right? say. But, but, <laughs> but there's, there does seem to me to be a sort of a personality overlap there. One, ironically, one is much more powerful than the other, Right. Uh, Queen Elizabeth's power is all symbolic and right. Merkel's power was 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 literal and real. And yet they both seem to be very uh, circumscribed in how they act, how they treat that 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 role. And and uh, yeah, I was curious what you thought of the, the similarities and differences there. Well, uh, I don't think Merkel would like the comparison. Really? Um, yeah, because. Uh, um, she, uh, I remember once asking her, she has a tiny circle of, of trusted confidants, like three or four. I mean, so small that when Obama went to say goodbye to Merkel in, in 2016, and he looked around her office that her, her team had gathered there, um, he looked around and he said, wow, you guys still all here? Because it was exactly the same yeah. team as eight years before. So, so um, you know, a remarkable uh, loyalty to the boss, so, so, which, is, which is telling about who she is. Anyway, once I asked one of those three people who was um, extremely helpful to me, um, uh, I, 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 I was observing the, the chancellor at a refugee event and, uh, and, and I, I, you know, being an American, I, I whispered to her, why doesn't she announce something that, you know, she will, and, and, uh, and, and, and the aide said, um, well, you know, she's not the queen of England. She doesn't make these appearances and, 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 and say flowery words. She's here because she wants to learn. And, and that was, so that was, she kind of put me down with that with that um, with that line that she's not the queen of England, which what she, because she is running a country. Sure. She uh, she she is in the throes of a uh, of a hellacious uh, humanitarian crisis. Uh, this was 2015 when, sure. when um, you know, one million Middle Eastern refugees were allowed to enter Germany. You know, her miracles, I maintain miracles. Um, probably most um, emotional and longest lasting um, move. And, and, and for once it was not, she didn't factor in, she didn't weigh all the advantages versus the disadvantages, which is how she normally operates. Sure. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, so, I, you know, it, it's an interesting concept and, and I'll be, <laughs> I'll be looking for your arguments, but, but, uh, yeah, Merkel also benefits from the fact that she can leave. Right. She, she, sure in fact, just left. And, you know, as much as she must be absolutely shattered observing what's going on, the very, in Ukraine, the very thing she worked 16 years to prevent, you know, this is precisely the scenario that that she devoted all those hundreds of hours uh, to um, trying to talk sense to Vladimir Putin, uh, now coming to pass just weeks after her departure, by the way, not a coincidence in my view. I was view. just going to ask what you thought. <laughs> yes. Uh, not a coincidence at all. No, I think, no, Putin um, is testing the, the, the will of the, uh, of the West, of the EU and of Washington. He saw a great deal of vulnerability in both Washington and, and, uh, and Berlin with a, with a brand new uh, chancellor. And, uh, and I think he, absolutely miscalculated and uh, and the the really tragic uh piece of this among many is that there's no one there like merkel who might have talked sense to him because merkel was the one head of state that he truly respects and literally they speak the same language being both of them products of the same Soviet foundation. Uh, obviously, they came out with different conclusions about, about that system. Uh, she considered the end of the Soviet empire, her liberation and the beginning of her, of her uh, restarting her life as a politician, because she, uh, as I said, she, she'd been in a lab for most of her adult life. Uh, and uh, the night the wall fell, she literally uh, took off her white coat and went looking for a political party for that same night for Putin, who was <clears throat> in those days KGB agent in Dresden, um, was catastrophic. And he, he has many times said that, that the, the demise of the Soviet empire uh, was the great tragedy of the 20th century. By the way, he spent that night shoveling documents and files into into his furnace so at, at such a uh, speed that that it exploded back in the ancient world philosophy wasn't abstract it wasn't theoretical it was designed to help you live the best life in stoicism 101 we have a two-week course that will introduce you into philosophy that will make you a better person there's interviews with me, daily lessons that will challenge you to be better, give you new ways of thinking, tackling the problems of life, becoming your best self. As Marx really says, you could be good today, but instead you choose tomorrow. Epictetus says, how much longer are you gonna wait to demand the best for yourself? Check out our new course, Stoicism 101 at dailystoic.com slash 101. So how much do you think his sort of begrudging respect for her comes to what we were just talking about, which is that she seemed to be of, of the world leaders, the one that he couldn't provoke, the one that whose goat he couldn't get. Um, you tell the story in the book about his little, uh, his, his little incident with his hunting dogs. Oh my God, yes. Oh. Her, her staff was just furious because he knew, of course, being a KGB agent, he did his his due diligence and knew that she was afraid of dogs having been bitten. So he unleashed uh, this big uh, black lab, Coney, who immediately went for Merkel and, and uh, you know, was sniffing around her. And Merkel typically just kind of froze. She her her staff was going bananas. Uh, just appalled. And afterwards, she said to them, you know, this is all he's got. Yeah, he's got to he's got to do this. So she so totally uh, saw through his his uh, his macho uh, exterior as as she did Trump's, uh, you know, the need to to always be the top dog and the need to dominate and and she she managed to to um, make them both look kind of pathetic, kind of ridiculous. And and, you know, she she one, one of her one of her uh, stratagems in negotiating with with uh, with Putin or, or any other 
uh, super uh, super macho guy, uh, you know, be it Erdogan or 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 Trump or Putin, um, is that um, when when they're um, you know, it, it, uh, erupting in, in, in verbiage about all the injustices that they have suffered, their, their people have suffered and all, you know, how, how it's time to correct uh, history and blah, blah, blah. She then, she lets them go on. She never interrupts. She lets these volcanic eruptions uh, pass. And then she said, and then she repeats what they just said, but in very plain, almost child, childlike uh, phrases, which make them sound pretty damn ridiculous. So this is what you, <laughs> um, and, and, you know, so she replays what they sure. just played. Instead of meeting bombast with bombast, she, she meets it with calm reason. And that does take the supreme self-control of someone who learned very early not to call attention to herself. And because there was no value in that in, in the Stasi state. And she was always the most brilliant kid in the class, whatever the class was. And, and you see in my, in the photographs in my book that she's always sitting near the end, near the back of the class and, and never calls attention to herself. Yeah, I can uh, I can imagine her waiting for one of those eruptions to to wrap up and then go, are you finished? Right. Yes. Uh, just yes. the sort of self-control <laughs> yeah. to not be provoked yeah. in it, but also not not to take it. She's taking it for granted. Or she, she's taking it at face value, but also not. Right. She's not. Yeah. She understands that it's a performance. Yes. It's not actually. And, and that to to take it seriously is to get sucked into it. Yes. Yes. On the on the other hand, um, it's, uh, you know, unlike the queen to return to to uh, your analogy, uh, she has to deliver. Um, sure. she, it's not enough for her to show up and, as the symbol of, of uh, the state uh, beautifully turned out which she rather rarely is beautifully turned out. That's not among her skill set. Um, but um, she has to actually uh, execute. She has to deliver fuel. She has to uh, make sure that, that the uh, extreme right stays uh, within a very confined space, um, that uh, nuclear power um, is is uh, is 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 never going to jeopardize uh, German um, uh, the the health of the nation as 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 she um, as she observed in in Japan with Fukushima after which she she took Germany off the nuclear grid uh, and uh, a controversial in other words in other words she's she's always managing a crisis there was never. There was never uh, a, a month that was crisis free from 2005 to the, uh, just a few weeks ago. I mean, it was just one rolling crisis. Yeah, I was going back to that dog incident. The other, what yeah. I think is so impressive about it too is like if you've ever if you've ever been around someone who's afraid of dogs, or if you're afraid of dogs, yeah. the the tricky thing is the dog also senses it, right? The yes. dog senses your your unstable, potentially yes. dangerous energy, and it's a feedback loop, right? Right, and the, right, right. The dog's uncertain, and then you're you know you're like this, and yeah. that's a and and so I, I what I find so impressive about that is not just. She understands that th there's this sort of global uh, exchange happening between her and Putin, but also she legitimately is afraid of dogs, and she somehow manages to keep that under wraps in that yes. moment too. Yes, uh, it, yes. it's pretty impressive. It is, but 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 again, I because I I I was um, born and raised into a similar system in Soviet occupied Hungary, the child of, of jailed uh, journalists, and and so I know what fear does and and how it infects your DNA and and certainly I was raised by two uh, I mean I was a little kid when when we uh, escaped from Hungary uh, and did observe tanks in my hometown so uh, Soviet tanks rolling into Budapest so so observing Ukraine has a has a sure. personal personal uh, resonance for me 
uh, in all its horror. But um, I, uh, you know, the 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 idea that that she learned to master fear and knew that um, that she had to um, assume that uh, people were informing on her from the beginning. And in fact, her lab partner, whom she was close friends with, um, was a was a, a pretty much a full time informer. And and, um, you know, he he uh, he totally betrayed her trust. And um, that was uh, that was just a reminder of something that her parents had prepared her for, which is that eventually they will try to recruit you as as they did. I mean, the you know, the Stasi had deeper penetration of East Germany than the Gestapo had of uh, Hitler's Germany. Um, I, I cite statistics in my in my book as to, you know, one agent for every, I don't know, 20 people. I mean, it was it was it was crazy. Um, so it was that that level of suspicion and and almost paranoia, in fact, um, has has been an advantage for her in her political life, because because one of her one of her great assets is that people are endlessly underestimating her. Sure including, you know, all her mentors who, you know, just saw saw this brilliant woman who can't possibly be a threat to them. Well, guess what? Um, Because she knew how to contain whatever it was she was planning, whatever ambition, and she had vast ambitions for herself. One of the reasons that she left science was that she she was a good scientist, but she didn't think she was Nobel Prize material. So in other words, whatever she was going to do. She wanted she to do at the highest level. The top. Yep. Yep. She was going to be chancellor or nothing. Well, and that's what I, when I see the similarity between her and, and the queen is the, the ability to wear the mask. Right. Yes. And, and uh, to also be, to, to have the self-control to be okay being underestimated. Like I think of the queen and her, her, her sort of weekly meetings with the prime minister she knows more than every one of the prime ministers. I mean, she's right. she's dealt with 12 of that person, right? Like she's exactly. been yes. in that chair for longer than that person has been alive in many cases. Yes. And, yes. and so to, to, there's a certain amount of egolessness required to being comfortable being underestimated. She, she understood that, uh, Merkel did, that, that her male mentors were using her or seeing her as, as a, a tool or a, not a threat, yes. and and she uh, was strong enough not to correct them of that helpful yes. Uh, yes. assumption. Uh, absolutely, she ne- she uh, as I say somewhere in my book that she she may never have torched her her uh, rivals, but she certainly never ran for the fire hose when yeah. they were self immolating. <laughs> that was her. Sure. <laughs> but you know, if I can, Ryan, if I can just. Uh, 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 underscore the one one obvious contrast between between uh, Her Majesty the Queen. I have nothing against her. Uh, happy I, I don't live in a monarchy, but uh, well, likewise, yeah, okay. Um, uh, I mean, Queen Elizabeth was born into this role. Yes, uh, Angela Merkel, Angela Merkel, however we want to um, brutalize her name. Um, she had to fight for every inch of territory sure you know as i've pointed out the triple the the triple outsider the scientist the woman and from the east so you know and and yet never breaks a, a sweat sure. um never reveal that uh pre, you know just pretend that you don't notice when when the guys are plotting who's going to be the one to take her down as they were you know just soldier on and and learn from the best and observe uh, what what pulls down the weak and the corrupt and uh, and hold hold your cards extremely close to the vest. So, you know, these are these are extraordinary skills. And some, sometimes I, I felt like I was writing uh, Machiavelli uh, volume two uh, called The Princess. Yeah, because because. You know, there are so many lessons um, in this tale. Um, 
for not only not only uh, for people with political ambitions, but I think for all of us. I know I know that that in the process of trying to decode this extraordinarily uh, opaque personality, I, I learned so much. I mean, I approach situations now with kind of one eye uh, cocked, you know, to, I, I don't want to say I ask myself every morning, what would Merkel do? But, uh, but it does, but it, but I do think that in, in, in a bunch of ways, it's changed me. It's, it, it's made me more, um, uh, less impulsive, sure. um, more, um, uh, I, I weigh, um, one of her mantras, uh, the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, because it's very rare that, that, you know, things are, are that clear. And, and above all, I try not to react to, you know, when I'm pissed off, um, which we are daily, you know, sure. especially, you know, during COVID, how often, you know, were we, were we ready to scream in frustration at whatever? Um, and I, I, um, I've, I've tried, she's, she's, she's made me a calmer person. So my children are grateful. Where do you think, uh, uh, there's a sort of, uh, a certain stoicism to her, right? Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Where does that come from? Is that the religious training? Is that the scientific sort of focus mm -hmm. on the rational mind? It, it, did she have a philosophical or political hero that she was modeling herself against? Where does the sort okay, well, you've of persona just, you, come from? Yeah, you've just listed a, a bunch of them. So, so um, first of all, she is a woman of deep but extremely private faith. She is the pastor's daughter. Her father had an enormous influence on her. Uh, he was a rather austere, rather forbidding, not, not, the, not a cuddly guy. She, yeah. she never fully got his, his uh, affirmation, his approval. He never voted for her, which is, I found remarkable. Neither of her parents did. Um, but uh, so, so, so the Lutheran faith, which for her is about a sense of um, responsibility for those less fortunate. And, and also a, um, she scorns, you know, flash and, and wealth and, you know, here, I mean, the, the, the idea that she left the chancellery a few weeks ago and returned to her rent controlled apartment in, in, uh, in, in central Berlin, no palaces, no yachts, no nada. Uh, no twenty million dollar you know, Netflix Netflix deal after so any, you know anything no. like that. <laughs> no, I mean that that would run completely against the grain for her. Um, any show it, it, she considers all you know acquisitions, property, so on, um, really burdensome. They they slow you down. She sure. she uh, she loves nature. Her her staff calls her her. Uh, rambles in the woods near her very modest little, uh, you can't even call it a country house. It's, it's a typical East German style dacha where she and her husband go and, and she loves to go for rambles there. They call her staff calls that her think tank because, because that's where she goes to be quiet and to think. And I'm guessing she's spending a lot of a lot of time there now, sure. but but for her to to you know maintain the kind of Putin like palace would be a colossal waste of time, and you you know you can you can only imagine what she thinks of the wealth that this man who was paid one hundred and forty thousand dollars a year uh, sure. has accumulated. He's he's he is uh, supposedly the wealthiest man in the world. So you can only imagine what she thinks of that sure. or, or of Trump. Um, she never she she was never invited to Mar-a-Lago. She lived in fear of being invited to Mar-a-Lago because <laughs> she might have had to accept. But, so, yes. So just to fully answer your question about where this comes from. So it's 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 the faith. Um, it's, it's the love of nature. It's the fact that she spent her, her youth in a very, uh, remote corner of, of Germany, Brandenburg. Um, and that was partly where she, where she learned to, um, uh, to rely on herself for her, uh, and to, and to draw on her own, uh, resources. You know, she was a country girl. She was not a city girl. 
by the time she got to Berlin, um, which was after she got her PhD um, to, to begin work at, in the um, East German Academy of Sciences, she she was a, a fully formed person. So so she was she was never an urbanite, though she loves she loves uh, culture and and loves uh, you know that I I I don't think that she's going to be uh, you know people are endlessly asking me so what is she going to do now. Um, and, and the thing she isn't going to do is take another job. Um, I mean, what job is there after 16 years as chancellor sure. of Germany? But nor is she ever going to be bored because she is so uh, turned on by culture, you know, music and, and opera and, and uh, plays and, 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 uh, and books. She's a voracious reader. That was that was um, one way that she escaped the kind of confinement of, of living in the Stasi state was that her parents, who were originally from the West, I mean, this is another really bizarre thing, is that when all the traffic was from East to West, escaping the, the Red Army, um, her family, Merkel's family, chose the opposite route and went from West to East because her, her, her father... Uh, took up the challenge to 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 uh, minister in the in the atheist communist state, and of course that's why that's why Merkel grew up in that atheist communist state. But they did take with them a rather rich uh, library of books, and and she that's that's how she discovered. Um, for example, you asked earlier about her heroes and, and 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 role models, and one of them is Catherine the Great. Kind of ironic, the German princess who became the Tsarina of Russia, and she has a, a portrait of her in her office. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. So, be, and Ukraine comes into this story too, bizarrely, because because uh, Catherine the Great um, conquered Ukraine. So, when you were you were saying earlier, you sort of you said you didn't think she could be successful in in the American political system. No, but, I don't. Um, it does feel like as sort of naturally reserved and uh, sort of indifferent as she is to, you know, fashion or makeup or appearances, mm -hmm. uh, you know, she, she's, as you said, sort of anti-charismatic. You do talk quite a bit in the book about how she figured out how to play the game and got yeah. like, you can't serve 16 years as a politician without being a pretty decent politician. And you can't do it in the information age without being pretty good at managing your image and uh, yeah. and, and and mastering these these sort of new media tools. So she, she does figure these things out. She does. But on the other hand, I think part of her survival mechanism, I mean, how do you how do you survive 60 years of one crisis after the next um, and, you know, and maintain your balance? And one way is that she she doesn't do social media. She's right. not out there. She is. You know, I have Germans asking me as her biography, does this chancellor have any grandkids? <laughs> right. I mean, they don't know I that mean, she doesn't have children. <laughs> they don't. No, no. Wow. I mean, you know, that 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 is available information. Sure. But but she she doesn't, you know, sit down and 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 uh, and and, you know, give interviews about about her, uh, you know, her wonderful marriage or her potato soup recipe or whatever. You know, there's none of that. She just doesn't think it's anybody's business. And that the, that fact. And here's another lesson from from uh, Machiavelli volume two is if you if you don't give it all away to the public, um, you know, that liberates a large part of you that, that that frees a large part of you to actually maintain life as a normal human. Sure. Which she, she's about as normal a human um, as any supremely powerful player on the world stage has ever been because she didn't she didn't reveal everything. I, I say in the book that 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 um, Germans uh, aren't tired of her looming over them because she doesn't loom. Sure. So she, you know, it was a clever thing, but it also in that, you know, um, they didn't really uh, get tired of her uh, in, in, in an age when, you know, our attention span is, is, is shrinking by the minute. They, they, they weren't tired of her because because she 
because she kept because she kept uh, she wasn't in their face at all. And that helped her tremendously as well. But and and do you think a little bit that some of it is expertly done political theater, like deciding to not to, she, it's not that she doesn't, uh, you know, focus, let's say, on clothes, but she makes sure. it clear that she's not focusing on clothes because she's focusing on doing her job. Right. Or 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 even, you know, is the hey, I'm going to go get my groceries at the grocery store uh, like a normal person. But is part of that also being seen around the people and and sort of in, is part well, of it expertly managed theater yeah. also? Look, at she is uh, a complex human being, unlike the rest of us. Simple yes, right. <laughs> um, and uh, of course, uh, of course, she knows that some of this really plays well. Um, and the fact that she lives like most Germans is pretty appealing. And that, and that in 16 years, there hasn't been a breath of scandal, right. in, in, nor any tell-all books. I mean, imagine an American. Uh, There's barely president. any regular books, let alone tell-all books. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I think my, bo- my book uh, uh, is, is, pro- is far more revealing than any other, because I, not, not that I uncovered all sorts of scandals, not at all, but that, that I, too try, I, I, do, I do attempt uh, to, to get... Uh, beneath the, the 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 surface of her, but uh, you know she did figure out that she had to make a non-story out of out of the fact that she had no fashion sense, and uh, and so the you know she was very strategic in that she she um, engaged a uh, a Hamburg designer who filled her closet with 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 the, the Merkel uniform, her her equivalent of a man's uh, uh, pinstripe suit, which is jewel tone jackets in endless shades um, and black trousers. I once I once uh, uh, caught her shopping for uh, for shoes in a um, in a um, department store in Berlin. And while but that her, even her, happened is such, such an absurdly yeah. emblematic uh, yeah. illustration well, of who she is. Yeah. While her uh, she hates to have her her um, security uh, anywhere in her in her line of sight. So they kind of pretended to be shoppers and she bought the same pair, identical pair of black flats, I think six pairs of them. So, you know, it was not like, you know, uh, like most women, I really enjoy buying shoes, but not six of the same, you know. (laughs) Um, and, and the same with grocery shopping. She really enjoys that. And one of the, one of the iconic photographs that, uh, to have come out of the, the COVID, uh, era over which she, she, um, very competently, um, ruled was showed her the, the day after she gave, um, probably the most emotional speech of her career. Um, and, and because, because she doesn't give speeches, everybody paid attention, um, with the, with the iconic backdrop of the Reichstag behind her. And she told the the nation in the most human terms that this is serious and that we're going to have to uh, make sacrifices, but that we have to look after each other. And the next, and and and, she, and please do not hoard. She promised people that there would be uh, that that the markets would would have sufficient contents. And the next day, she was seen, and I have this photograph in my book, um, pushing a shopping cart with with the same number of uh, bottles of wine as rolls of toilet paper, four of each. <laughs> So, you know, she's very she's she's very clever. She's 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 also, by the way, extraordinarily witty. Her she's got she you know, she's got a killer sense of humor, which which unfortunately she doesn't display in public. Do, do you think that that perhaps uh, I, I imagine this is connected to her humor, but but you just said that when, when she gave the speech, people listen. Do you think one of the, the sort of ancillary benefits of not always seeking the spotlight, always bloviating is that uh, when you speak, people listen. You know, there's a exactly. famous line from from Cato. He said, I only speak when I'm confident that what I have to say is better not left unsaid. Right. And yes. and that, wow, that that's seems a to, great line. That yeah. seems to encapsulate how she approaches uh, yes. communication. Yes. Yes, uh, absolutely. And and uh, and by the way, because she has a lot of self 
awareness. She also uh, knows that that uh, public speaking is not her friend. She was she was suspicious of Obama at the outset because she thought he was he was just that, just a, a you know a young man in a hurry who who had a silver tongue. It took her a while to to figure out that he was he was actually a, a serious substantial guy. But uh, but theirs was a not always smooth relationship. Yeah, David uh, Halberstam in his in his book about um, uh, Bill Belichick, he said uh, Bill Belichick was not only in the in the steak business, he had contempt for sizzle, right? <laughs> and and that that seems to be her approach as well. She she's skeptical of she's not only uh, sort of isn't charismatic, but it seems that she might be skeptical of charisma in other yes. people because it might mean that there's more uh, style yes. than substance. Yes, and also that that um, charisma um, can can lead to to um, very dangerous uh, developments. I mean, you know, she's she uh, of all the um, con- modern German leaders is the one who has most assimilated the lessons of the Holocaust, and and has has made in a in a you know. Um, really historic speech to the Knesset in Jerusalem, she identified Israel's um, uh, security as as a foundational reason for the German state to exist. So she tied German Germany's uh, destiny to that of another country, Israel. And and, the, you know, why? Because uh, even though she was raised in the East, where where um, they uh, made up, they invented this mythology that that all the Nazis were from the West and that all the good Germans were were from the East, and and therefore the East never went through the 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 de, uh, the confrontation with the the, sure. with the past that the West did, and and by the way that has uh, been a real problem for, for Merkel because, because um, well, two reasons. One, um, she didn't pay sufficient attention to the fact that, that most East Germans, her fellow East Germans, you know, couldn't re- restart their engines as fast as she did. Sure. And she was impatient with them. And, and therefore, she didn't acknowledge them um, to the extent that they felt they needed to be acknowledged for their, their suffering. And so a lot of the, the um, so-called uh, IFD, the far right party, which is in the Bundestag for the first time since the Second World War, is from her region of East Germany. And, and they're, they're, they're disgruntled. And it, it's not the economy, stupid. It's, it's about, you know, and, and this, this, is, this is also uh, a blind spot of hers is that because she's such a hyper rational person, she underestimates the role that uh, the irrational plays for, for most of us. Is that uh, that strikes me as maybe something that she and Obama share when you're a very rational, uh, uh, you you have control of your temperament, you're very brilliant. It makes it hard for you to understand Mm -hmm. slash accommodate people who are not just not that, but maybe the opposite of that. Yes. Yes. She actually she and Obama are much alike in 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 that regard. They're they're. um, um, dissimilar in um, in other fundamental ways, which sure. I which I uh, relate. But uh, but uh, Obama so trusted her more than any other. I mean, I mean, uh, Ben Rhodes, whom I interviewed for this book, said that that uh, that the the word the, he can't avoid the word love to describe how Obama felt about Merkel, and and she was the only one for whom he felt sure. that. However, when 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 Putin started acting up in um, 2014, um, moving in on Ukraine, um, Obama um, wouldn't just ha- didn't have the patience to engage with Putin. Yeah. And, and 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 said to Merkel, you know, that man just lies to me morning, noon and night. And well, of course, he lied to her, too. But uh, but. You know, you look at the map and you realize that 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 uh, Russia is not going away and Germany's right there. And and in fact, I quote um, Bismarck, the, the first German chancellor, as saying 
that the key to a sound German foreign policy is to make a good treaty with Russia. That was in the 19th century, and, and it's, it's, it's true today. So she was the one who carried uh, the baton for the West sure. um, in, um, in those endless hours uh, hunched over a table in Minsk um, where she said that the only way she knew the time of day was whether they were serving um, bread and jam or a roast. So that level of focus and concentration um, and stamina, you know, the ability to just stay at the table until you find common ground is really what diplomacy is about. And very few heads of state have the, the patience, the stamina, the the strategic thinking. And the other thing that, that she brings to the table um, is, uh, and this is, again, goes back to her, her brilliance, her photographic memory, is that, is that no, no one, including Putin, can match her for, um, for, for a mastery of detail and fact. She said, she said at one point during the Ukraine crisis that she, she knew every tree in the Donbass. Because she was following, sure. you know, the, the uh, even though Putin kept denying that these, these were not his guys, um, you know, they were called little green men because they didn't have any insignia. Um, his, his, um, his men were, you know, overnight moving and, and she knew every inch of territory that they were taking. And man, do we miss that, that kind of. Uh, uh, adult supervision of Putin now because you don't see him hunched over a map with, with anybody now. Sure. Um, and, and that's, that's a, that's a, a tragedy for, for, for all of us. I was, uh, I was struck by the chapter in the book on her relationship with her husband. Uh, you, you tell the story, <laughs> which I'd heard before about him not attending her inauguration and, okay. and such. I can't tell if that's cute or sad. Yeah. Well, look, it, it might be sad for you and me, but uh, but it works for them. Um, they've been together for many decades. And uh, and, and part of their deal is that uh, he gets to do what he likes to do and she gets to do what she likes to do. He's a he's a very distinguished uh, quantum chemist, well known in his field. And uh, the only person who ever called him uh, uh, Mr. Merkel was Nicolas Sarkozy, and it didn't go over too well because Merkel is, is the name that she kept from her first oh, right, right. marriage, a very brief starter marriage, um, you know, based partly on, uh, I mean, they were, they were, she married uh, Ulrich Merkel, who was a, who was a fellow um, student in, in Leipzig and married him because you got better, you got better apartments if you were a married couple. I mean, they also yeah. loved each other, I think, but, but she, she outgrew him pretty quickly, but, but the marriage is very close and she, but absolutely private. Absolutely. She's never given a single interview about her. Can you imagine? It's incredible. I mean, I think that's that's the the worry or the suspicion that people have, you know, when you see these people who are very calm and cool and collected, that that maybe they're just not capable of emotional in, in, intimacy, not that they're they're keeping it out of the workplace, but that they're they're somehow robotic and not capable of that closeness or connection. But but you do you think that that's not the case with her? Not at all. I've seen her tear up a couple of times. She teared up uh, uh, at a memorial for um, World War One at, at Verdun, where where um, you know it's just I don't know if you've ever been there. I mean, it's just one of the, one of those uh, battlefields with just endless crosses across rolling green fields, kind of like the landing beaches in Normandy. I mean, just it just just uh, uh, boggles the mind to think of that many fallen and you look at the graves and, and they're, you know, very young, young soldiers, German and French. And, and part of this, the commemoration was, was that young Germans and French kids just, just bounded uh, with, with white streamers among the 
among the graves and she teared up at the, you know, at the notion that their grandparents had, had died in, the, in those beautiful fields for, for an inch of territory and she so hates war. So that was one time she, she emoted. And, and the other time was, which really had historic consequences when she, when she met this refugee girl in the summer of 2015. Uh, I call that chapter the summer of Reem because Reem was this uh, little girl who um, was, was uh, picked for a town hall as a sort of model refugee girl. And, and she started weeping uh, into the microphone saying that all my friends are making their plans, but I can't because, because I don't have uh, the security of, uh, of being able to stay in this country. I want to stay in this country. And, uh, and Merkel was, uh, she whispered into her own, oh my God, God, I mean, she was uh, she was completely blown away by that, and then subsequently had the girl to to the chancellery a couple of times. The the girl and her family, of course, have now been given permanent asylum in Germany, along with one million other Middle Eastern refugees. And you know, her 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 uh, Republican friends, like like Henry Kissinger, a mentor of hers, uh, said to her Angela uh, to to allow one refugee in. Um, is a humanitarian act, but to allow one million is to destroy German culture and civilization. Well, guess what? That Henry was wrong. That did not happen. Um, and for the most part, those uh, that one million uh, population of refugees have been have been integrated into German society. It's not even a big subject anymore. I mean, it certainly isn't today because today it's it's all Putin. Isn't that the irony, though, that after 16 years or not quite, but after yeah. a decade, a decade and a half of uh, rational, uh, almost wonkish sort of policy decisions and, and mm. ta uh, sort of fact based solution, you know, focused uh, decisions devoid of emotion or, or grandstanding or any of that, that her her greatest decision and her most inspiring and perhaps uh, most permanent part of her legacy was the opposite of all of that. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. I, I, uh, where are you going with that? Uh, just, just that it's, it's, yeah. it's uh, you know, you, you have, she has this playbook, this rule book that she follows yeah. her whole career. Uh, and then yeah. she, she yeah, has the ability to throw it out at the last yeah, second see, to do yeah. her greatest, her greatest yeah. bit of work. Well, see, I don't, uh, I don't quite see it that way because I think, I think that, that um, her, her um, moral code has always been uh, operational. It was just the first time that it was really tested hmm. um, because until then she was dealing with things like the, um, you know, the nuclear um, uh, crisis, the euro crash, um, the, you know, having having to figure out, you know, how to deal with populists, you know, th those were not emotional issues. This was it was all of all of a piece, because um, as much as she doesn't talk about her faith, it's so obvious that that uh, that that is that 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 is the, the 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 her core and and that is the secret of uh of what has uh sustained her and what drives her you know it's her ambition is real but it's not sort of empty ambition she really she really does believe that um that she that she can deliver for not only her people, but but for the world. I think her big disappointment is that she she was just about to to focus on 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 climate. Um, her um, uh, her her twenty 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 January uh, New Year's speech was was um, uh, that's the one speech a year that she that that she can be counted on to to deliver. And she said that that now now um, I'm going to focus on climate because I haven't been able to. And then six weeks later came COVID. So, you know, if I were to hazard a guess as to, as to where we will be hearing from, from Merkel after, you know, let's give her a little break now. Sure. Although, although I sincerely hope that she's on the phone to, to her successor about how to deal with Putin. I'm sure she is. I'm sure, sure. she is. Uh, and probably even to Biden. Um, 
I think I think it, uh, the issues of, of climate and the urgency of climate um, that'll be one. And the other, I would guess, would be would be uh, women who are still um, far from uh, uh, far from empowered, in, in particularly in Africa. Um, I, I, I think she'll be she'll be um, s- stepping up to 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 those issues, but no, no um, uh, formal positions, nor does she care about a Nobel Peace Prize. So. There's a there's a Marcus Aurelius quote. He says, uh, just that you do the right thing, the rest doesn't matter. Yes. And and that to me, her 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 one million refugee policy. Uh, I think she probably I don't know it, her, the advice from Kissinger. Uh, mm. There's probably a political truth in that. But it, it, it's also morally abhorrent to have taken that into consideration. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and, Absolutely. and yeah. so it just struck yeah. me as, as this, I don't want to say emotional, because that. but you're right, it's a profoundly moral choice that she made, as opposed to a political choice. Uh, right. It was a moral decision, which, which we see so rarely from leaders. Leaders make political decisions and partisan decisions, but very rarely do they make moral decisions. Yeah. I think this is what makes her, quite frankly, um, the greatest, the most important politician of the 21st century, is that she was able, she's no Gandhi, yeah. um, but she's no Mother Teresa. She's, she's a cunning, when necessary, ruthless, um, brilliant, but deeply moral politician you know when you you it, it's hard for me to even put those two words in the same sentence moral politician because it's so rare but she is that and and the fact that she doesn't um, rub our noses in that you know we conclude that if we study as I have studied her uh, that that is that is the inevitable conclusion but she hasn't said I'm a moral principled person. And, you know, she she doesn't ask for our approval, which also makes her very appealing. No, and that's why I, I thought the book was so important. I, I read a few book, a, a book a few years ago uh, called Lincoln's Virtues by William Lee Miller. And, and he was saying that, you know, we forget because we look at Lincoln 150 odd years ago. We see him as just a moral figure as yeah. opposed to a politician. He had the same job as every right, other right. president. And and just as 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 Merkel does, but to be able to be a politician and a moral figure, to use the imperfect art of persuasion and governance yeah. and coalitions to uh, enact moral acts uh, is profoundly important. Even if you disagree with all the, yeah. the specific moral acts that that person took, because yeah. that combination is so rare. We see the pragmatic or the calculating politician all the time where the charismatic cult of personality politician, but Merkel combines the elements that we should want to see in politicians far more often. Yeah. Oh, that's so well put Ryan. And I, I, I would, I would give a shout out here to the German people who value person, Mm. seemingly uh, unexciting, uh, you know, uh, uncharismatic leader who isn't uh, out to seduce them. Yes. Um, you know, that, that, that they would uh, have the good sense to four times elect such a person really speaks of a, of a mature democracy. And even in her leave taking, um, you know, no, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's hard to avoid the comparison with our recent leave taker. Yeah. Um, you know, no attempt to uh, argue with with uh, with the outcome. In fact, she chose she uh, she's the most pop- popular politician in Germany by far. Um, she could have stayed, but um, she um, she chose at her own, she she chose to leave at her own speed, and then really cleared out and let and let the next guy uh, get his bearings. I mean, that is what that is how democracy is meant to work. And um, sad to say, it doesn't work that way in our democracy. We who were the midwives of this Germany really taught them well. 
and uh, I don't know, something happened. No, they, 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 you're right. They, they've outpaced us. Uh, they're, a, they're a more mature That's, democratic base in, in some ways than, than, than we are. And that, that is a, a, yeah. an indictment for sure. And devastating for Merkel, who loves America. You know, this, this, uh, of all the German chancellors, she was the one who most revered this culture, this, you know, she said that among her, her fantasies is to drive, drive around um, the West Coast in a, in a, a convertible with, uh, with Springsteen on the, <laughs> on the radio, which is, again, not how we think of Angela Merkel. Usually. Well, and that's so the opposite of, of growing up in East Germany, right? That's the yeah. most American yeah. <laughs> free, uh, you know, Levi's jeans, convertible yes. Pacific Coast Highway. Uh, that's, that was probably the dream that uh, propelled her in many ways. Absolutely. Yeah, it was her first trip was yeah. to the Pacific. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I absolutely loved the book. Thank you so much for writing it and, and for coming on. And uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. Thank you, Ryan. It was such a pleasure. I feel like we could go on and on. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure we could. And now I hope you write this. Uh, I think you should write a sequel to The Prince called The Princess, and it should be lessons on on power and uh, and cunning from women throughout history. Wow. You know, I may come back to you. <laughs> I, I think you should write it. I'll, I'll read it in two seconds. Okay. All right. <laughs> I like, if I could write it in two seconds. <laughs> yes, that, that would be the issue.